The Laplace Herschel nebular hypothesis states that due to gravity, the matter collapsed and flattened and then was stretched out because of centrifugal force. The stars that contracted left hot gases behind and in return created our present day planets. Not only did Laplace and William Herschel develop this model, but they advanced astronomy and science in many other ways. I will be discussing Herschel's road to success and his major contribution to the nebular hypothesis theory. William Herschel was born in Germany in 1738 on November 15th. He was the son of Isaac Herschel, who was a musician in the Hanoverian Regimental Band, along with his brother Jacob. Knowledge seemed to be a must in this family, and William never fell short in that. He was an indomitable student, even though, due to the war in his country, the education was limited. He more than repaid his deficiency through music and astronomy. William decided to begin his life in England. There he was a music teacher for quite some time, and in 1765 he became an organist in Halifax. For almost 30 years he was known as a respected musician. For those 30 years he made a living through teaching, composing, and performing on the violin and other instruments, but primarily the oboe. In the first few years he struggled to provide for his maintenance. He eventually revisited Hanover, just so he could bring back his brilliant sister Carolyn Herschel. Because William brought back his sister Caroline, he was able to open the door to mathematics, which from then on was impossible for him to close. The study of mathematics plus the yearning for knowledge is what led him to astronomy. His curiosity is responsible for his great success as a scientist. Because of William's great interest in astronomy, he knew that he needed a telescope. But he wanted a telescope so large that he would be able to study and see the heavens with. Unfortunately, there was nothing large enough for him at this time, so he decided to make one himself. Along with the help of his brother and sister, they toiled for many years polishing and grinding hundreds of specula. After 1774, every hour of the night was dedicated to perfecting this telescope. Eventually, they perfected it, and from 1780 to 1801, he studied and learned and wrote down his memoirs in the Philosophical Transactions. This book is how he communicated his findings to the Royal Society. In 1781, he sent his first memoirs to the Royal Society, telling them about the rotation of the planets and their several satellites. His biggest question was, are these rotations uniform? From 1781 to 1797, most of his memoirs are based on this very question. Later on, they then discovered Mars polar caps were similar to Earth's polar caps, and the satellites rotate around the planets just as it does in the Earth. Studying these planets led him to the greatest discovery of his life. What he would soon discover would alter the image of his professional life forever. He focused his telescope on what seemed to be a comet. This comet, however, did not follow the characteristics as any other comet. In fact, it followed the many characteristics of a planet. And that's what it was. The planet we know today as Uranus. He found it moving right outside the orbit of Saturn. He wanted to name it Georgium Cetus. But general consent disagreed and wanted Uranus. He then discovered its six satellites and he wrote to the Royal Society of his findings. Through all these years of astronomy and discoveries, it ultimately led him to the Laplace Herschel Nebular Hypothesis. The Nebular Hypothesis is a widely accepted model that explains the formation and the evolution of our solar system. It states that stars form in massive clouds of molecular hydrogen. This makes them very unstable, which ultimately leads to them collapsing and that is where the stars are in fact formed. This is a very complex process which always leaves a young star surrounded by gaseous protoplanetary disks, which in a lot of cases leads to the development of planets. This, that concludes that the formation of planetary systems is a natural occurrence in star formation. Herschel and Laplace came up with this theory when following the steps of Immanuel Kant, who was unfortunately unable to come up with this model. William Herschel would not have been able to help produce the Laplace Herschel Nebular Hypothesis if it was not for his family, his yearning for knowledge, and his early discoveries. Through these, he grew exponentially as a person with each new finding. He cannot be summed up as a person in just one word, but rather as a quote stated by himself. If I were to pray for a taste which would stand by me under every variety of circumstances and be a source of happiness and cheerfulness to meet through life and to shield against its ills, However things might go to amiss and the world would frown upon me, it would be a taste for reading.